This project is, is phase two of a three to four phase project that the refuge is taking on over like a 10 year period. We did the first project in 2021. This is phase two. The ultimate goal in the end is to have a free flowing stream running through about five miles of basket slough that's completely fish passable, has native riparian forest. The beavers move in and they start utilizing this forest and they create dams and that just makes the wetland and stream habitat that much more complex, that much more valuable to juvenile salmonids um, and a whole host of native aquatic species. From a broader perspective, you know, the, the project that this is a part of is um, essentially a transformative um, undertaking. It's an overhaul of most of uh, the wetlands that you see out here. It, it results in increased control over the water levels, which means more effective management of the wetland vegetation, which means large scale enhancement to wildlife habitat. In addition to, uh, you know, eliminating those sources of unnatural water drainage, um, we have restoration of natural channel features to the landscape, um, meandering streams that have uh, expansive floodplains attached to them. These are you know, incredibly important landforms that didn't exist um, prior to this project. In the end, this project will have the, the perfect balance of, of both stream, riparian, and wetland values. And, and really, we're trying to put things back to pre-Euro-American settlement conditions to the extent that we can. From a personal perspective, I think seeing the sheer amount of work that has been accomplished in such a short amount of time has been the most rewarding. You know, being a manager and working with largely maintenance personnel on the ground has been incredibly rewarding. Uh, getting to understand the rigors of implementing, you know, on the ground actions for a project of this scale. It's been an incredible experience. This project is, is going to be hugely beneficial from a habitat standpoint to the refuge, especially aquatic and wetland habitat. The goal of the project is to, to restore stream channel to its historic conditions from the current state, which is a channelized ditch that runs through the, the refuge. And that ditch was dammed in four or five different places in the early 90s or late 90s as part of the original wetland restoration project. Um, but the issue with it was it dammed the stream in five different places and doesn't provide any fish passage. Every single one of the MAT team members works for the Fish and Wildlife Service and they, they work for the refuge system. So they came from different refuges around region one, but also all over the country. Um, many of them are Great American Outdoor Act Strike Force team members. Part of their job is to go around and work on deferred maintenance projects throughout the refuge system. Many of them also are, are individual refuge employees that normally work at a specific place. and and they just volunteered to be here because this is a big, cool project. You get a lot of experience in a really short amount of time. These guys are working six days a week, 12 hours a day, just around the clock. But, but yeah, we don't really have a choice on this project. It has to be done in the driest 60 days of the year um, to, to get the work done in a wetland and a stream environment. You have to do it when it's dry. And, and we're basically racing the clock before the fall rains start and, and at that point in time, we will have to button things up and, and make sure that all of our erosion control measures are in place and, and that you know things will be environmentally sound going into the winter. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's a little bit of a race. I came here to, to understand what goes into implementing a project of, of this scale. Um, and not just from, you know, standing there and observing it, but from actually being there on the ground, servicing the vehicles, operating the heavy equipment, you know, um, working with the personnel, uh, you know, working with Graham on occasion. Uh, I wanted a, a nuts and bolts understanding of, of how a project like this goes from, you know, 
plans and ideas to actual reality. One of the most rewarding elements of this project for me is uh, just seeing how much resources have been leveraged. You know, the finite amount of Fish and Wildlife Service resources have been hugely leveraged on this project, largely by building it ourselves with our own equipment, calling around different refuges in the system and, and borrowing equipment, getting equipment equipment hauled here, and, and then all the amazing equipment operators that are here uh, volunteered their time to leave their duty station and, and come here in the heat and do this tough work. And we've got people from Hawaii all the way to Indiana. And that, that really does, it, one, it saves the service a lot of money, but also it allows for more experienced operators to train and mentor less experienced operators. It's a huge training opportunity. It's also just, you know, the, the way that, that we kind of bring our own people up, which is really cool. Um, it's kind of how we do leadership in the service. It's, it's how, yeah, we, we learn science and we learn innovation is by, you know, having our, our experienced people teach people and then bringing in less experienced people that maybe have more innovative or fresh ideas. And so then it's just this melting pot here of, um, yeah, getting, getting the actual work done on the ground.